Uh, good afternoon, morning or night. I would like to talk to the ladies about a little about their body and cervical cancer. Ladies, for God's sake, me a big one. We no do no pap smear. Do no pap smear and save on yourself from cervical cancer. I was a victim. I have to say was because I did have cancer, cervical cancer. It took me a long, long time before I could have do my pap smear. I decided to do my pap smear. And when I go, you know why? Because I was spotting. I at the age of 53 them timely. Or 51. And um, somewhere they land along the line. But I decided to go and do a pap smear when I started to spot. Because I'm on menopause, pass through menopause, and when I get prepared, out, I spotting, spotting. And it became even more frequent. So I decided to go and do my pap smear. And when I went to the clinic, nobody do no pap smear in no the clinic. Go to the private doctor because the clinic take too long. And if anything do no, it will get worse. So, I went to the clinic and I never get my pap smear. And I have to go a tone up on my cousin. And she take me to see a private doctor. And I go uh, do the pap smear there. And when I do the pap smear, I was bleeding. And then she sent me straight to UA hospital. And when I go to UA hospital, and then the biopsy there, and then... I was looking at, at, at the, I watched them, what they do on the monitor. So when I see what they was doing, I could see my cervix. It was red, red, red. And one whole side, I like it eat off. So after they do the biopsy, and I was to pay around two, five, and plus other money. And I, the, the doctor, I asked the doctor said to send me on to, KPH hospital, when the result come back six weeks after that, the result come back, so may have cervical cancer stage two. So I said, okay, stage two is not that bad. So the doctor said, I catch it early. Okay, if it gone in a three, four, you know, say that bad. So they take me and turn me on down to KPH hospital. And when I go down to KPH, they make then give me the appointment to come back. And I went there again. And when I go there, they send me go do urine tests, heart tests, MRI, uh chest X ray, um CT scan and a whole lot of tests. I have to do blood test. One whole heap of something cost me a lot of money. When I don't do tests up there, it was almost over $300,000. Plus the fear up and down, up and down, for run up and down, for go there. And back at St. Elizabeth, when we don't check it out, it was over $500,000. And it was easy to find because I didn't have any money. It was my cousin's my cousins, God bless them, and my four children, their mommy did have. They stand by my side 24-7. God forever bless them. And I'm telling you what I go through. After I done those tests and they admit me to the hospital now, I ask them to put me into Hope Hospital up at Papinde. Where you stay up there and you travel, go down a KPH pandem bus. You go down a KPH. And when I go down there, they start the treatment. Five weeks of chemo and radiation. So I was away from my yard for five long, solid weeks. And I was among other pure 
um, cancer patient. Some with breasts, some are cervical, some are at a cancer, but it was only cancer patient. And believe you me, it is very distressing to see the people them who sick with cancer and the various different kind of cancer they have. Some of them have cervical cancer. It was worse than mine. Some of them operate. I couldn't operate pan because mine was spreading. Because if he could operate, I would have taken out my womb. And I couldn't take out my womb because it started to spread on the right side, I think, if I can remember. And then a whole lot of people are leaving. Some of them start, like them start to decay. And the, the place... It wasn't a nice smell with some of the people then. Uh, but you had was to stay there for, for your own life. So I stay up there and I travel every morning for that five weeks to KPH Hospital. When I go down there, they give me chemo for one day out of the week. I'm on that chemo for from about 11 o'clock straight back up until 4 35 o'clock you depend the, you, you take the chemo drips then after that now i have those to go to the the radiation table which they rotate the the, the radiation machine they on my right side then they put it on the left side then they put it over my belly and then they put it underneath my back i was on that table for at least one fifteen or maybe a half hour sending heat through my body, the lower part of my body. Let me tell you something, I feel weak. And my head pain me, and when you take the chemo, you feel bad, you vomit, you don't have any tears in your mouth, you don't have no appetite, you're weak. Some people, you do some people worse than some. So me have to give God thanks to me. Uh, some people just vomit. And let me tell you something again. Some people, them body, not strong enough to take the chemo. Your body not strong enough. Them the time that your pressure raises. And you know, say if you do have pressure again, sometimes your pressure will raise too high that you can't take the chemo. Your body don't have enough potassium. Your body don't have this. Your body don't have that. Some people have to get blood. And some people can't take the can't take the chemo. So all they have to give them is source of um radiation and the radiation alone can bring you. You have to take the chemo with the radiation to get the full treatment. God bless me. God bless me. I am so lucky, so favored that I could have taken my chemo. Because sometimes I tell you, you know, my dear, sometimes me sit down there then and I pray and I wish sometimes, not really pray, but I wish sometimes I could have never get to take the chemo. How the chemo do me when I come home? I lie down in the bed and not even talk. I don't want to talk to nobody. I can't take a sound in my ears. The way how my head feel. I want to lift up my head and I can't lift up it. How my head feel heavy. And then... I'm telling you all this to tell you that. Do your pap smear. If anything is there, you, det you, you, you catch it from early so that you, you can get a, a quicker, a better treatment. Your body can't take the, if you take chemo, you then can't operate by you. If they catch it early, early in a stage one, they will operate by you. It's better for you this so. But if they're in a stage two, stage three, then you have to take chemo and radiation. And who tell you, say, your body can't take it? Who tell you, say, you're going to get you in time for the treatment work? I tell you, God, grace and mercy, that is the reason why I'm here today. It's not lucky, me lucky. I the favor of God and the grace and the mercy of God upon my life. And prayer, prayer prayer so after me do them the five week of chemo and radiation me go home 
me weak, me weak, me weak, me weak, me weak, me and your whole immune system match up. Because remember, say the white blood cell and the red blood cell I hit burnout. So you have to drink all kind of something there so and build back up your body and build back up your immune system. And in at them the time the COVID did rapid. And when me the home I try to build up myself, bam, COVID take me. Me catch COVID. Yes, I did catch COVID. That's why I'm telling you that I am here because of the mercy and the grace of Almighty God and prayer. God grace and mercy and favor upon my life. Because my immune system, they way down to nothing. And that's the time I catch chemo and they warn me. That's the time I catch COVID. And anyway, I got through the sickness. I got through everything. And it wasn't that bad because I take the vaccine. And God bless me that I get over it. But I'm telling you that do me a big one or do no pop smear. That if anything, I'm going to catch you far early. Because it's not easy. After me do them the five week of chemo and radiation, and I see the suffering of people up there with cancer. And come home. Two to three months after that, then call me back for the brachytherapy. And brachytherapy, God know I think chemo. And the radiation did bad. But when it come to the brachytherapy, you have to lay down in that bed. You don't get thrown in your head. With one instrument up in your vagina, we then carry your theater go put up in your head. For three days. Two days straight, 48 hours. And you can't move, you can't even raise up a part of your body because you will push up with something, then push up in your vagina. Radiation, internal heat up in there. And your uncle can lean over up on the table and drink through the straw. Apple juice, cranberry juice, white cranberry juice, apple juice, coconut water. Nothing more. And you not see no nurse until one time for the day or one time for the night. Because in this a radiation and they not come in at every minute with the radiation for sick them. So you have to lay down in there, you want somebody else. Pan the bed, can't get up. And you see when they come come release me and take the radiation, the, the radiation out of my vagina, out of my womb. Me could even get up out of the bed. And the nurse have to hold me up out of the bed. And you walk like a baby. Hold on pass and walk like a baby. Go bathroom. And little by little you gather your strength. And I tell you something. You might not be lucky like me. You might not be favored like me. I am still here. I went and I do my MRI again. And some other tests. For sure now how the treatment work. And when I go and do it. God bless me so much. They send no see the result come back, no chase of the cancer. Glory be to Almighty God. Glory be to God. No chase of the cancer. And I still they still send me go do a pap smear. And I did it last year, August. And when I do the pap smear and come back. They don't see nothing again. So I have to keep up my treat me me keep up my checkup. Um at Kingston Hospital, KPH. So um I have to go back April now. Go back go to keep go do a checkup. And uh, after then check you up for the after five years and you don't have no cancer, then you're cancer free. Please, I am begging you ladies from 30 years up until you're dead. Because I see some people are 70, 65, 75 odd up the old lady have cancer. 
Sorry for them. Oh, Lord, lady, we can't have one for their day. Just don't get in rocking chair. Their hospital with cancer. Cervical cancer. Please, do your pop smear. Because it won't go God, grace and mercy can bring you through this if you catch cervical cancer. It was a mercy and the grace of God. And I prayed and asked God to forgive me for my sins. And empty me inside so that the Holy Spirit can come inside and heal me. Because let me tell you something. God, Holy Spirit, now come into a dirty vessel. Your body is a temple of God. So you got to, got to, you have to get your body clean of all unrighteousness. Empty. For God come in and heal you. And that's what I ask God for. Forgive me for all of my sins. Ask and pray diligently and believe upon God. And don't ever feel sorry for yourself. Or think negative. Or have negative negative people come round here and tell you all kind of foolishness. Um, please, if I ever catch cervical cancer, don't go to cut no, no whole part. Um, herbal medicine and God, this place and God, that the place. Say. Stick to the hospital and make them do what they have to do. Don't mix up herbal medication with what they make you because you're going to mess up yourself. Just do your pap smear every year and you will be fine. God bless you all. I'm telling you this because we are women and we have to look out for one another. God bless you. As you take my advice, go and do your pap smear. You know easy. You know nice if you catch cancer. You might not be lucky. Talk.